Hey, what's up Facebook? Just want to drop a video to follow up on the video that was on Instagram this week about the patient that come in, came in for an eval uh, who was a motocross competitor, a uh, crossfitter who had um, severe acute low back pain, had had several episodes like this previously, had gone to PT in the past, took him six to 10 weeks to get over that with the mumbo jumbo that they gave him there. And uh, his friend told him that he needed to come see us because we would do something totally different. So if you remember, I showed the pamphlets that he brought in uh, from his previous physical therapist. So his last flare up was about a year ago, went to physical therapy for that. Um, he didn't bring anything from them, but his most recent flare up, he had been to this physical therapist a couple of times. So in the post, I went over why this is garbage physical therapy. If you are giving people handouts of pictures and then writing things on them, like make sure you feel the squeeze, um, feel the outer abs and back of thighs contract on this one. So, so verbal or written cues to get them to feel what you think they are uh, weak with or what they need to strengthen. So let's go through the whole myriad of why that whole thought process is wrong and why when you give patients garbage handouts like these, hopefully you never, you don't even have this box of handouts. When I got out of PT school, the clinic that I worked at in 2000 had this garbage. When I was a patient there in 1987, they had this garbage. So if you have this garbage in your clinic, you are still living in the 80s. You are giving people garbage uh, exercises and hopefully not stretches, but my bet is you're giving them stretches too. And the reason why you're doing that is because you are thinking the way you were programmed to think. You were programmed to think that if you were a patient, you were programmed to think that way through undergrad, grad school, your clinical rotations. If you had a mentor when you got out of school, you were probably programmed to think the way that they think, and they think in the 1970s and the 1980s, which is why we still have people getting this garbage when they go to physical therapy. So why does this happen? Because you learned information in PT school, in, grad, in undergrad, you learned anatomy, you learned physiology, you learned biomechanics, you learned uh, uh, chemistry, all that stuff, which is facts. And then you were given a test to regurgitate what you memorized. And then you moved on to the next thing. And then when you got out in the clinicals, you got paired up with somebody who had clinical experience in the broken medical model, which is why people are still doing this. So what you did not learn was how to apply the facts, the knowledge, the information that you were given. You didn't learn how to apply it, you learned how to memorize it, regurgitate it, forget about it, and then go off on your merry way doing the next thing. So if we understood why people are coming in, they're coming in because their root cause of their problem, whether it's pain, swelling, lack of range of motion, whatever, instability, weakness, the root cause of their problem is neuromuscular inhibition. And we know that this does not assess neuromuscular inhibition and neither does any of the conventional assessment techniques that are out there. They assess range of motion, pain scale, uh, maybe strength, uh, girth measurement, swelling, that kind of stuff which has absolutely nothing to do with the root cause of their problem. If you're assessing symptoms, you only can treat symptoms because that's the, that's the narrow thought process that you are stuck in. And then when you go from your assessment to your treatment, your treatment doesn't make much sense. You're looking at your toolbox and go, and which one of these tools do I pick out and throw at this person? And that's why you're striking out. So if you would have got down to the root cause in your assessment, you would have got to neuromuscular inhibition, which is physiology, the part that you never learned how to apply in the clinic. And then when you address physiology, then you can go to reinforcement exercises, which look nothing like this. So if I'm a CrossFitter who competes in motocross and I come in with low back pain and you put me on my back with breathing techniques and squeezing balls and try to feel my external obliques uh, contract and I'm doing this mumbo jumbo, I'm going to leave just like this patient did. 
because this has nothing to do with CrossFit. It has nothing to do with motocross. It has nothing to do with walking. It has nothing to do with getting out of a car. It has nothing to do with nothing other than laying on my back. So if I'm a really bad wrestler, you gave me some things that might carry over into what I do. That's why this never works. So what we did with him is we assessed everything and he couldn't, he couldn't touch his knees, let alone touch his toes. He could do about a quarter squat, stopped because of low back pain. Trunk rotation was terrible. Uh, heel toe walk was stiff, gait was rigid. Um, he even had uh, shoulder issues because when we screen somebody, we go from head to toe. So we screened his shoulders, we screened his C-spine, and what did we find out? Oh, motocross guys have a lot of other injuries that were in the past that are gonna feed into his low back. Does any of this look at his C-spine, assess his shoulders, do anything to look at his trunk? Nope. That's why he didn't get any better. So at the end of his visit, after we looked at him from head to toe, got to the neuromuscular inhibition, root cause, reversed that, then gave him real exercises like lunges, squats, goblet squats, deadlifts, uh, lunges with resistance, band exercise with trunk rotation, all the things that are functional to him, which means they have components that are weight bearing, so he's loaded, through a uh, transverse plane, transverse plane components in a planar motion, not single plane, not neutral spine crap because that doesn't transfer over to anything. Um, we gave him those things to work on. Guess what? He can touch his toes, he can squat, he can twist his spine, he can move his shoulders, and he has minimal to no pain after one visit that took roughly a half an hour. How long do you think it would have taken him to get better doing physio ball squeezes while exhaling and feeling his external obliques contract. Nope, doesn't work. So it's not your fault that you're stuck in a clinic that gives this crap out and doesn't assess anything and has no idea how to get to the root cause, but it is your fault now that I just told you how to do that and you know where to go to learn how to do that. It is your fault if you stay in that system and you continue to do this day after day, week after week, month after month, and you continue to screw your patients over because they're not going to get better doing this mumbo jumbo garbage. So you know what the answers are. You have more questions that need to be answered, and that's what I'm here for. That's what the membership is here for. That's what our community is here for. So when you are ready to get out of the broken medical model, Stop assessing symptoms, stop treating symptoms, stop putting patients through the runaround and actually get real functional results in a half an hour, 30 minutes, not 30 days. Make sure you reach out to me and tell me that you're ready to reinvent your career and I'll teach you how to do that in less than five months.